Dr. Michael Schluter, uh, who is going to be talking uh, about implications with respect to pressure and temperature. Um, I'm from the Institute of uh, Multiphase Flows at Hamburg University of Technology, Michael Schlüter, my name, and um, I'm the PI of a group that is working on the implications of uh, pressure and temperature on uh, the uh, behavior of deep sea blow blowouts. And uh, of course, I have not done the work. I have the pleasure now to uh, present you some of the results. Uh, our group consists of uh, several uh, PhD students and scientists uh, who are working uh, in the United States, Claire Paris uh, from the University of Miami in uh, Australia, uh, Zach Emmon um, from Canada, uh, we have uh, Steve Larter, and uh, also we have three groups uh, who are coming from the uh, University of uh, Technology in uh, Hamburg. So um, I would like to take you on a journey now down to the uh, deep uh, sea um, and would like to explain you more in detail what's happened in the blowout and what can we learn from this uh, results that we had uh, found there. Uh, first of all, um, we have already heard about uh, these uh, terrible accident in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and uh, the motivation uh, for us uh, from the scientific point of view is now to uh, help to um, get this uh, insufficient uh, science basis that uh, has, uh, was not able to uh, support the response strategy for the Deepwater Horizon accident to uh, get uh, better information uh, for this uh, uh, response strategies. So there were several um, insufficient uh, science bases. For example, uh, the, there were these uh, deep sea uh, conditions down uh, 1,500 meters down in the ocean, and uh, this means that we have unknown effects, for example, on hydrate formation. You remember the uh, very big problem to, um, to, to close, uh, to shut down the, the, the well, and uh, furthermore, uh, there were untested uh, uh, subsurface uh, dispersant injections uh, without any experience on that. And uh, also, there were uh, not ma very much known about the biodegradability of uh, the oil, and uh, also um, the topic of uh, marine oil snow sedimentation has al already not uh, known so far. All this together was, uh, was the motivation to come to a, a development of an enhanced uh, response uh, strategies by means of integrated modeling, so important for us in this uh, Sea Image Consortium was, uh, to bring together the knowledge uh, from the uh, deep sea blowout to the rising behavior of uh, the methane bubbles and droplets uh, into the far field. And uh, this sh should a little bit illustrate what we are talking about. So I would like to uh, bring you to a journey of uh, single oil droplets now. First, we're starting at the blowout preventer, the broken blowout pre preventer, what happens in the uh, deep sea with uh, oil and uh, gas, then uh, oil and gas is uh, transported through the plume and uh, the near and far field uh, into the ocean. And uh, as you can see from this uh, models here, uh, we have already uh, some achievements uh, to uh, predict how the oil is distributed in the uh, deep sea. For example, the sizes of the droplets can already be calculated with a V-drop uh, J uh, model by, by uh, Michel Bouffedel. Then uh, we have Scott Sokolowski from uh, Texas A&M who is able to calculate with the TAMAC mo model uh, how the oil is distributed in the plume and uh, how intrusion layers are appearing uh, here. And uh, furthermore, we have uh, the model from uh, Claire Paris from the University of Miami who is able to calculate uh, the far field distribution of oil and uh, how uh, the hydrocarbons are dissolved in the ocean. So we have already a lot of uh, very nice uh, information and it's a highly integrated model that uh, helps us to determine the distribution of oil. So from the particle size over the plume, the near field, the far field, with data from uh, the currents in the ocean, everything is taken into, uh, into account with a very high complexity. And here you can see from this nice uh, numerical simulation from uh, Claire Paris, how the oil is distributed in the uh, Gulf of Mexico at different days. And uh, she also takes into account uh, with this oil connectivity modeling system, the influences uh, on the environment. So very highly integrated, but 
it looks very nice, but uh, at the end, uh, the, all the models are needing uh, one uh, important uh, databases, and this is the size of the oil droplets and the size of the gas bubbles, because the size of the particles is important to uh, predict their velocity and uh, how the particles are spread um, in the near field and the far field. But how can we get information about the sizes of uh, droplets and particles, about their velocities, uh, directly at the wellhead? This is the initial important basis for all the other uh, modeling. And uh, therefore, it's uh, important to estimate size and uh, velocity range of the oil droplets. And uh, so I uh, would like to go uh, down uh, together with you to the uh, deep sea uh, ground. And uh, the big question is, how is uh, particle size distribution, um, the uh, particles of oil that are uh, effluent here from the uh, wellhead, how is this affected by pressure? And we have heard about this uh, several times before, how does dispersants are affecting that? And it's not very easy to, uh, to predict what happens under uh, 150 bars that we have here at the sea ground in 1,500 uh, meter depth. So uh, the particles are moving from uh, this high pressure to the low pressure at the sea surface. What happens with the oil droplet that uh, is under these uh, conditions? And uh, furthermore, it's more complicated because at the um, blowout preventer, uh, you have already uh, seen by um, NC, this uh, old, uh, blowout preventer has been broken uh, at the Deepwater Horizon catastrophe, and this causes a pressure drop in the blowout preventer of about 90 bars. So what happens with the oil particle that goes through a broken uh, a blowout preventer with a pressure drop of 90 bars? Nobody knows this uh, in, in detail, but uh, probably this will have a strong influence on the droplet uh, size uh, distribution. So. Uh, to show this uh, a little bit more clear, we have uh, 240 bars at the beginning of the blowout preventer. The oil uh, goes through this uh, system, and then we end up at the sea ground at about 150 bars, which means we will have a sudden pressure drop, a sudden release of pressure in the blowout preventer, and then a slow uh, linear uh, decrease in pressure from the sea ground to the sea level. And this pressure should have an influence on the oil particle, uh, we don't know this in, in detail, and therefore we need some more information first. Of course, the oil itself is incompressible, but uh, at the wellhead we have not just the oil. The oil is saturated with uh, methane, and this is what I would like to show you now. Um, we have at the blowout an, a gas-to-oil ratio of uh, 1,600 uh, square, uh, uh, square cubic feet per barrel oil, which means uh, the oil is saturated uh, at the blowout with natural gas. And this natural gas, as you can see from this uh, data from Ready, is almost methane. So we can say we have an almost methane saturated oil at the uh, wellhead. At, and uh, uh, if we look on this data from the University of Calgary concerning the uh, saturation of oil with uh, methane, then you can see we have a quite high saturation with methane at the uh, high pressure, but with decreasing pressure, the saturation concentration of methane in the oil droplets decreases. So what does it mean? This means we have an oil droplet saturated with methane, and then we release the pressure, so the methane has to go somewhere, right? And uh, with decreasing pressure, we will uh, lose a, a, the uh, saturation of about uh, 26 gram uh, methane per liter oil. So this methane has to go somewhere. But uh, where and uh, how does it work? And exactly this is something that uh, we uh, explored at, in uh, Hamburg at our pressure facility. So if the saturation concentration decreases with decreasing pressure, what's happening with the uh, oil droplet? And to study this in more detail, because it's extremely difficult to predict the behavior of a saturated oil droplet under pressure release, uh, we uh, designed in uh, Hamburg at the Institute of uh, Professor of uh, Dieter Krause and uh, his, P uh, his PhD student, Karen Malone, this uh, pressure facility. This is a high pressure facility that enables us <laughs> to have the same conditions like on the, on the sea floor. So at 150 bars, it's driven with artificial seawater. And uh, here we have a facility that uh, can be uh, introduced into this uh, high-pressure vessel to study uh, uh, 
let's say, mini deep sea blowout uh, under uh, artificial well-defined conditions. And this is how it looks like uh, inside. We have the nozzle here where the oil is distributed into uh, the system. We are working with two cameras, one high-speed camera from, from this side with a mirror here looks on the, on the system itself. And uh, we have an endoscopic uh, system that is uh, located inside of the plume to measure particle size distributions of the oil inside of uh, this uh, artificial plume. And uh, here you can see the nozzle where the oil exits. Uh, this is another nozzle where uh, go exit, so the dispersant can be injected. And uh, this is the endoscope to measure the particle size distribution. We did uh, hundreds of uh, experiments with uh, different kinds of uh, pressures, uh, temperatures, and also uh, with um, so-called dead oil, so oil without the saturation of methane, and with uh, oil that is saturated with methane, we call this live oil because it's much more uh, realistic than the dead oil experiment. We used the Louisiana sweet crude oil from uh, BP surrogate, and um, uh, yeah, and we uh, we pre-saturated the oil in uh, such a vessel with with the methane. And I would like to show you how this uh, looks like. So here in the middle, we have the dead oil jet. This means oil without uh, methane saturation. We have here a, a well-known uh, angle of uh, the, how the uh, oil exits uh, this jet. And as you can see on the right-hand side, if we have live oil, so with saturated methane, uh, then you uh, get a much bigger angle of excess here. And uh, this is for sure because the oil is expanding suddenly after the release. Yeah, and this expanding comes from uh, the gas that uh, will expand if uh, the pressure is released uh, suddenly. So, and you can see here additionally methane bubbles, of course, because uh, the gas is uh, released by this uh, pressure drop. So, on the uh, left-hand side, you can see the measurement of the particle size distribution uh, in yellow. Here we have an automatic image analysis, and uh, this is a particle size distribution for the uh, dead oil that is in a good agreement with uh, other experiments, for example, from uh, Sintef in Norway. And on the uh, image below, you can see the live oil experiment. And unfortunately, we have been not able so far to measure the particle size distribution of the live oil because the particles are much uh, smaller and they are looking uh, different than uh, uh, oil droplets. It's more a fluffy substance. And uh, this is because we have a kind of a foaming effect by the methane. It's a, like an emulsification. So uh, the uh, uh, distribution is definitely uh, much smaller than uh, compared to the dead oil, but uh, it's difficult uh, to get the particle size distribution so far. And if you look on the uh, colored images, uh, then you will probably agree with me that um, uh, these uh, live oil jet in our laboratory looks very close uh, concerning the color to uh, the uh, jet at the real uh, deep water horizon blowout. So this uh, sudden pressure drop over the well hot obviously uh, leads to a very rapid uh, degassing and a kind of um, emulsification of the oil. And because this is the same effect, you know, in, from your uh, kitchen at home, if you are preparing a cappuccino by uh, bringing steam into the milk, this is very similar to the effect what happens here with the expanding gas in the oil. Uh, it looks very much like a cappuccino, and uh, Stephen Moraski called this, uh, because of that, the cappuccino effect. Uh, this is uh, uh, the cappuccino effect that gives us uh, these emulsified oil at uh, the uh, wellhead. So if we look once again on our graph, we are at this point where we have this sudden pressure drop, and this sudden pressure drop leads to uh, this kind of uh, degassing, or let's say a kind of explosion of the uh, oil droplets directly at the oil exits uh, the wellhead. And this is actually an effect that had not been taken account so far, because it was not possible to make experiments under these uh, high pressure uh, conditions. So the big question is now, if we have already this emulsification process, what happens if we add dispersants? Do we get a better dispersion with uh, this uh, Corexit uh, system or not? And uh, I will show you another movie to make this uh, more clear. Uh, here we have uh, once again the uh, live oil jet without Corexit, without the dispersants. And on the right hand side, it's just separated by this red line. We have uh, the same situation, but in this case, 
uh, with uh, Corexit. One second, I will start it again. Um, and uh, as you can see, um, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, don't want to run again, but I guess uh, you already uh, could see that uh, on the right-hand side, the live oil jet uh, with Corexit looks very similar to the uh, live oil jet on the left-hand side. So obviously, uh, the addition of dispersants makes no additional uh, uh, yeah, significant effect on the particle size uh, distribution. And this is, of course, a very important uh, effect that uh, obviously it's, uh, it has to be taken into account whether we have this emulsification process for the oil or not. But uh, this is not the end of the story because we have a, a longer way from, of the oil droplets from the wellhead uh, to the surface. And the question is if we have these oil, uh, gas saturated oil droplets and it's moving uh, through the uh, water column, what happens with the oil droplet afterwards? And uh, especially what is the velocity of the oil droplets, which is an, a very important input parameter for all the modeling. So how is the rise velocity affected by pressure? If the pressure is during the rise uh, journey uh, be, uh, decreasing from 150 bars to one bars, and uh, this is the illustration for that. So uh, this dro droplet is now uh, going to the sea level and uh, reaches at the end one bar uh, pressure. And uh, to study the effect of the degassing, uh, we used another facility in Hamburg. And uh, this is a high pressure cell. You can see this here in the middle. And in this high pressure cell, we have the possibility to introduce a countercurrent flow, countercurrent uh, to the rising velocity of the oil droplet. And here you can see the, the oil droplet in the countercurrent flow. And now uh, the trick is that we release a pressure in the system from 150 bars to uh, ambient pressure. Um, in the same velocity how the droplet uh, gets uh, the pressure release. And as you can see with decreasing uh, pressure, this droplet is expanding, and especially at the end, it, it expands very strongly, and you can see these uh, tiny methane bubbles that are appearing within the droplet. So obviously, uh, with uh, decreasing pressure, the uh, methane is expanding within the droplet, and this, of course, um, also affects us affects uh, the uh, droplet size and droplet density and also the droplet uh, rising velocity. So this effect is well known from the decompression uh, sickness from, from uh, diving. You know that divers uh, have a high saturation concentration in the, in the blood if they are in, in the deep. And if they are coming up, then they have to avoid that uh, gas bubbles are appearing in the bloodstream. This is extremely uh, uh, dangerous, and therefore you have to stop at a different uh, uh, depth to make sure that uh, all the gas uh, is in equilibrium and you have no outgassing um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the bloodstream, and uh, therefore this is a very similar effect. And uh, here you can see how the gas bubbles are uh, increasing in the droplet, and uh, uh, so the whole uh, oil droplet will increase and the density will decrease. This is a, a calculation that shows the particle diameter increases, the particle density decreases, and the gas void fraction within the droplet increases. And now you can calculate uh, the uh, rising uh, velocity, and you can see that the droplets are accelerating if they are going uh, to the surface. And uh, we have uh, for this uh, live oil droplet an, a rising time that is uh, just the half with uh, six hours uh, compared uh, to the dead oil uh, droplet rise velocity. So I would like to, to summarize uh, my talk now. So I've shown you that we have uh, already a highly integrated model that uh, helps us to take into account all these physical uh, properties, which is very nice. But on the there are several uh, physical effects, like this cappuccino effect or the degassing, that uh, has to be investigated uh, more in detail and that has to be taken into account in these models. And especially the subsurface dispersion injection is a very important point that uh, have to be, uh, uh, yeah, we have to look for that very carefully because it might be useless if we have already an emulsification process uh, at the wellhead. And uh, so in the future, we have to calculate particle size distributions more carefully by taking into account uh, pressure release as well as uh, turbulent kinetic uh, energy. 
And so I would like to come back to the question uh, from, from Nancy from the beginning. What do we need to know to effectively regulate and uh, respond uh, to accidents associated uh, with ultra-deep uh, drilling and production? And uh, from our scientific point of view, first of all, we have to feed the models with uh, reliable data. And therefore, it's necessary to know the depth of the blowouts, oil properties, the volume flow rate to uh, calculate turbulent kinetic energy ratios, the gas to oil ratio is important, and also the pressure drop over the blowout preventer is very important. If we know all these uh, data, then we can feed the models and we can predict how oil will distribute in the water column, and uh, this hopefully will help to uh, get uh, oil development policies uh, to come to better risk evaluations because we can predict how oil will spread at a certain uh, oil spill, and uh, this will also help to calculate uh, the height of insurances for drilling rigs at certain positions in the ocean and also, of course, to develop uh, further response strategies. And I hope uh, this is uh, really a very important uh, legacy of the Deepwater Horizon. So I would like to uh, thank you for your attention. The model is much more complicated. We are also dealing with hydrate formation and also biodegradation under pressure, but this is too much for one uh, presentation. Therefore, I would like to thank all our partners uh, that uh, have been worked on this uh, scientific outcomes, and especially I would like to thank uh, the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative for financing these uh, projects. Thank you very much. Thank you.